Okay. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Monica Granados. I am one of the inaugural fellows of the uh, Reproducible Research Fellowship from the Frictionless Data um, program as that is part of the Open Knowledge Foundation. Um, I'm also a policy analyst for the government of Canada, as well as um, serving on the leadership team of pre-review. Um, Lily, would you like to introduce yourself? Hi everyone, I'm also a fellow with Monica and I'm a marine science PhD student at UC Santa Barbara in California. And uh, I study how coral reefs and coastal communities are affected by a global environmental change. And I see reproducib uh, research reproducibility and open data science as a tool for helping us to speed up the ability of scientists to um, improve resilience in these systems and understand issues faster. Great. Thanks, Lily. So the two of us are frictionless fellows, and we wanted to tell you a little bit about what our experience was like as part of the inaugural cohort, and tell you a little bit about um, two really important tools that we learned about during this fellowship and how we've applied it in our own work. So when we do science, like Lily and I, um, we do a lot of data collection. So uh, I'm a trained food web ecologist. I go out and collect data on crayfish. Lily has, uh, has collected some data on uh, the octopus trade. And that data gets put into some form of uh, data entry. So um, at least in the ecological field, a lot of us just use spreadsheets like uh, Excel that output CSV files. When we start to talk about our data, whether it's in a uh, publication or maybe we put out a tweet about it, we might get a lot of interest about the data. You know, people will, will say, well, I'd like to use your data or um, part of your data would, would make a great addition to a meta-analysis that we're doing. Okay, so we get people who are interested in our data. How can we share that data? So there's been many ways that we uh, can share the data and ways that we've shared data um, in sort of the history of uh, science and, and scientific publishing. Um, we could, you know, you could send it by carrier pigeon or by snail mail or by the Pony Express or by uh, computer email. But regardless of the way that you send that information, oftentimes, you end up staring at the computer screaming, I hate other people's data. And that's because a lot of the data that you have, there's sort of like innate parts that you understand yourself, but that might, may not necessarily mean that others are gonna understand that data. So when they open that CSV file or that you know, spreadsheet, there's going to be columns that you don't understand or blanks that you don't understand or sometimes the NAs are NA slash A or, you know, hashtag 99 has been one of my favorites. And it leads to, you know, a lot of confusion and frustration. So what if we could make it easier to share data? What if we can make it easier to give the information that we've collected and instead of just sending in SESV files, that we put some context into this data. So that's what we learned through the Reusable Research Fellow Program. We did a series of journal clubs and seminars and blogs, and we learned about two important tools that are part of the Frictionless Data Program, data packages and data validation. So we're gonna give you a little sneak peek into data packages and data validation. And then at the end of the presentation, we'll give you a link for you to learn more about these tools and how you can implement them in your own research workflow. So starting with data packages. Okay, so what are data packages? I felt that as someone who is you know, pretty committed to the open science movement. I was doing a really good job of making my data available. So my data for a particular manuscript that I published um, last year um, is all available, uh, the code's available, as well as the CSV files where the raw data is in. And so you could go to GitHub and grab that information, and there's even like a readme file that gives you a little bit of information about the data. 
But the truth of the matter is if you don't really have any information about the column headings, you're not gonna know what anything means. You don't know about units. You don't know how I collected that data. And so through the program, we learned about data packages and it's, um, I'm, gonna, I'm going to tell you a little bit about the web tool. So if you go to uh, the data package creator, the URL is at the bottom of the screen there on the bottom right. What you can do is upload your raw data. So you can upload um, either the CSV file or you can upload the resource path. So I can actually take the data that was already in my GitHub, upload it. And then what's really neat about this tool is that it lets me give context to all of my columns, basically. So all of that information that I have. So I've got some column headings that are day, trophic, species, mesocosm. That may not mean a lot to you if you just open that CSV file. But through the data package creator, I can give you some context and then make it easier for you to take that data and then apply it in ways that you may, uh, may find useful. So here is just a screen cap of once you load the, um, the path of where your resource is, it'll find your columns. And then you can give information in the title descriptor and then give information about the data type. So all of this is using information to, uh, to generate a, a, a schema, a table schema, basically some information about how the data is um, is structured and information about the data itself. So I can add information about, so what did you mean by experimental day or by day? Oh, it's the experimental day. And then I can give information about how long that experiment ran, for example. And then I can tell you information about like the, the data, the datum itself. So what this does is like once you've inputted all of that information, you can then download the data package as a JSON file and send the JSON file to your collaborators or to any interested party instead of just a CSV file with no context. You can then also receive other JSON packages and then upload them here on the data package creator and it'll you can see all the information that your collaborator has provided about the about the resource or about the data. Now, there are other ways that you can use the data, uh, like to, to use data packages in a more um, a reproducible workflow. So you can, in, you can use um, uh, Python and R libraries that have been built around this as well. But I just wanted to give you a little taste of the power of sharing your data as a data package. I'm now going to turn it over to Lily. She's going to tell us a little bit about good tables. Hi everyone. Uh, so Good Tables is the second reproducible data science tool offered by the Frictionless Data Program. The tool was developed specifically to help with data validation and it's available uh, both as a web, web tool and then through the command line. So let's walk through the web tool version and try to validate Monica's crayfish, algae, and snail data frame. Uh, so first we have to navigate to the Try Good Tables um, web browser. Uh, so the first, oh, great. So um, let's say you're using uh, just the raw data and you can do this step before you create your data package or if you don't have um, a schema which is made with the data package, this is still a great tool just to check for structural errors of the data frame itself. The way you do this is um, you upload your data and check to see if there's structural errors such as missing entries. You can either upload your file from your local directory or you can insert the URL where your data is stored. For example, uh, up there we can uh, add Monica's raw version of her uh, GitHub data. And then you hit that button that's in gray right now that says validate. And then if there are no structural errors in your data frame, you'll get a pop-up that says valid table. Uh, but let's say that, oh, but here in this example, we see that um, there wasn't, there's actually one error, structural error that we found, um, content error that we found, which is that the density column variable, we had it marked in the uh, schema file as a, a numeric 
or as an integer variable when actually it's a numeric variable. So Monica, if we could go back to that schema slide, um, part of the data package creator uh, JSON file that you make with that uh, includes the schema. So you have to make sure that you um, pull out that part of the JSON file. And so uh, a schema makes it possible to run a more precise validation check on your data. So you're not just looking at the structural level, but also at the content level. So um, then you just copy this part of the JSON file, which is the schema. And you have to make sure that you include the curly brackets. And, <laughs> um, that's a problem I always accidentally run into. Um, so then you go back to the Good Tables web browser and you insert the schema and then you hit validate and that's where you will be able to validate the content as we showed before um, so in order to fix that error that we saw on the density variable column you can either uh, make a change in the data package tool or you can change the json file directly and then after you update the json file and you re-upload it uh, on the Good Tables web tool and hit validate, you should get a notice saying that everything is valid. Um, yeah, and then so I guess we just wanted to end by saying um, that this is a short introduction for these different tools. And if you want to learn more about them, we're hosting a 90 minute hands on workshop on May 20th, and we'd love to see you all there. And um, then we're op the Open Knowledge Foundation is also accepting applications for their next cohort of frictionless data reproducible research fellows. So if you're an early career researcher and interested in applying, uh, we would highly recommend it and would love to talk with you about that more. Great. Great. Yeah. yeah. Oh, go ahead. Sorry, didn't want to. No, cut just going to say no. Thanks so much. Thanks so much, Lily. And uh, yeah, you can look at those. Um, the top. URL is the um, where you can actually follow the syllabus of um, the data package and data and the schema. And you can learn a little bit more about frictionless data. Yeah, and at the bottom you can you can learn a little bit more about what the fellowship is like and uh, how to apply for the next round. Great. Yeah, I just um, there was a lot of comments and um, questions in the chat about how this all fits together and it works. Um, and I know there will be a lot of questions over in Slack for sure. I just, uh, uh, Vicky actually just put a question in or a comment into the, Slack, uh, the chat that I was I had in my mind as well, which is, um, it would be really great if we could mandate this type of analysis or, um, or um, review of tabular data before it goes into repositories. A lot of data repositories are full of tabular data that are missing columns or poorly documented. And I didn't know if there were any discussions that you've had with data repositories around integrations on ingest or kind of QA for, for what, in that sense. Yeah, I we haven't um, as the fellows, but I can actually tell you a little bit about some of the work that I've done um, through my, my like day job. Mm -hmm. um, that is, you know, we, we deal with a, a lot of data at environment and climate change and um, we actually did a, um, a hackathon to see if we could have someone build in like a checks that as like data got fed into a repository, they would check to see at least for some really basic things like, you know, like empty cells or, um, right. you know, like characters. And so, um, you know, on, even in like a, in like a weekend hackathon, they were able to, the students who were working on that were able to come up with something. So um, it is certainly something that um, big organizations uh, care about and would like to see happen. And so that yeah. at least, and that the researcher isn't necessarily the one that's doing it, but at, that at least there's some kind of process to ensure that that actually does, those checks do, do happen. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I agree. Mm -hmm. Um, so another question was, what advice do you have for scientists that are trying to integrate these tools into their workflows for the first time? Is there um, some advice that you'd have for the science scientist community? Uh, yeah, I think definitely there's a lot of video tutorials on that link that Monica shared. And mm -hmm. then 
coming to the workshop where we're actually going to work through it all together. Um, and I think both of those would be really great. Yeah. Okay, great. Um, well, thank you both. Uh, we have a lot of the questions here. We will move over to Slack. People can great. interact with you there. And uh, we appreciate you walking us through it. Um, I had seen a presentation about frictionless data when it first was getting launched. And it's very slick. The, you've come so far. It seems like it's really, um, uh, you know, hitting a lot of the original promise. So congratulations. Yeah, it's been a pleasure. It's been really fun. Yeah, great. Okay. Uh, right. Thanks for joining, everyone. Thank right. you.